What am I looking at that's here? That's it. That's good, my man. That's good. That's perfect. That's how we want it. That that almost looks like less than stock. I did it lesser than stock. Ooh, yeah. Kids, don't try this at home. That's a dead rat, dude. Day 11 and the final week to get both cars running and to compete. We got a lot, a lot of work ahead of us. Even though you see the motor sitting here, we still got to do the full cage inside. We got to mount the seats permanently. We got our hydraulic e-brake we have to mount. We got to do our style points this week. We got a lot of work ahead of us, a lot of work. <laughs> Supi! Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready for the week? Hell yeah, let's do it. What do you got? What do you got lined up for yourself? I, just got, I gotta finish this side, right here. I gotta finish this in cooler pipe today. So let me, let me ask you a question. Before we had the turbo, we were talking about putting it down here. As we mentioned a couple <laughs> of times. Why did you mount it up here? Because it's way easier to do that than to try to make it all the way down here. <laughs> Was that, was it that or was it a request from someone? Well, well it was an idea from Ron, idea from Ron. It was a suggestion from suggestion Ron. Suggestion from Ron. So All we right. blame Ron. All right, Ron is getting blamed for this. Good morning everyone, it's Monday. There's a whole bunch to do, not a whole lot of time to do it. Fuel lines, electrical and whatnot, like it's now getting to that point of the build where everything, every little knickknack, like every little tedious thing, uh, that's easily forgotten needs to be done. Alex pulled off the uh, knuckles from his little, uh, you know, heat treating bay. How are, how are we looking, dude? We're looking real good, man. I'm nice. not worried about these things falling apart at all. Yeah, no, we let these things like cool down over the weekend. Oh yeah, dude. That was a major hurdle that we needed to get done. Got to make up some more fuel lines. I've been kind of doing some little temporary lengths as far as setting that up. Also, we got to figure out the rest of the wiring scenario that I got going on over here. I think that sums up about the day. I'm going to get to work. Yes. Teardrop it or what? Yeah, you see that? Now nah, they're making us work. For real. You know I'm lazy, right? I don't like to work. Now we have to do it. Just because he said it. You gonna edit that part out? Welcome to Building Battle where we got bagels today. Uh, we got cream cheese. Building bagel. Building bagel. Welcome to Building Bagel. We didn't get that. You didn't you guys didn't get bagels? We didn't get bagels. What'd you get? We got egg and cheese. Oh, dang. Oh, you got, that's, that's what talent gets. Anyway, Dan's looking sick. We got bagels. We got builds. Building bagel. Back at it on a Monday. And so I see you got your, uh, you got your intake side plumbed up. Yep. Your coolant pipe right here. This is, this is an actual jack handle. Well, the ends are the jack handle. Yeah. Just the ends are jack handle. Oh, the ends are jack handle. Okay. Yeah, this one's just an inch and a half. And then our water neck for the, uh, the thermostat housing is the jack handle. 
<laughs> but we still yeah. got the jack handle. Jack, it's just a little shorter. <laughs> it's just a little shorter than Honestly, before. you could barely tell. Yeah, it is, I mean, it was up here. I don't know what the big deal is. Jack still works. It still you works. You got the cooling plumbed up. Uh, Soupy, I got another question. Uh-huh. I got it. You know what? I'm going to put this bagel down real quick on these. There we go. I'll get back to that later. All right, something I noticed the other day. The switch panel? The, the switch panel? The switch panel right here, yeah. but there's a... There's a middle finger button on that there switch panel. Oh, that middle finger button? Yeah. That's over there. Whoop. That's your displacement replacement? That's yeah. it, right there. What's the goal with that, uh, that their nitrous setup? Oh, we need the nitrous for uh, our torque. Yeah, we're gonna try to hit it down low, build a little more torque. Mm -hmm. Fatten that curve up a little bit? Yes, that's right. And then okay. when, the, when the boost kicks in, the nitrous shuts off. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you guys are gonna program it with the ECU. Yes. yes. So that it fills in that bottom gap at the yep. power band. Yep. Man, that's smart. So it's like it's like really friendly anti lag. Yes. What you doing, dude? What you doing, bro? <laughs> I'm just coming here to check out what you guys are up to. Just taking care of all the little knickknacks, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, got all the big jobs done, and now. Josh is talking to... Josh is on the phone. Josh is doing business. Oh, is He's writing things man. down. This is the, this is, these are the parts of the build that we never cover. I'm super interested in what's going on right here. Oh, yeah. Dude. Like I said, we got the bulk of the work done, but now we're just taking care of the little knickknacks, little problems. Yeah. Little things. For um, sure. Dude, this is sick. Are yeah, you kidding me? Triple that. adjustable. That's that's for dialing your Ackerman in. Yeah. So okay. They're pretty wild adjustments, but uh, you know, some adjustment is better than no adjustment. Of course, of course. So your goal today is to get this thing on the ground. Yeah. If we can get all the suspension done today, that'd be great. But we just placed an order for some new springs for our BC coilovers. Okay. So we want to run a stiffer spring in the front. We're not running a sway bar, so we're taking this 8K and we're bumping it up to a 12K, and then we might try to take this coil style, the spring style, which is just like, it's a two and a half, just straight old coilover spring, and we might try to adapt that to the back and get rid of that big old beehive setup we have. Nice. And then you're going stiffer in the back too? Yeah. A little stiffer, maybe, but we don't have to. The back's not a big deal. Okay. You know, we got any squad and we got a whole bunch of other factors playing into that. But the front, it's really important because you don't want this thing to wash out. Okay, all right. Well, I guess I'll let you get back to work. Oh, well, thanks a lot. I'm gonna keep bothering you. Though. Thanks for bothering me, man. <laughs> get out of here. All right, I think I just heard a truck. I don't know, maybe someone dropped something off. A box definitely showed up on the dock. Soupy, what's it say? Great, look at Alex. Alex is already, <laughs> Alex, Alex like, beat us to the race quit the box. Thing. Like like, like a creepy dude, look at him. You guys are just taking your time. <laughs> I'm like a kid on Christmas. For real, he just wants to tear into the box. You see him? <laughs> he does want yeah. to tear into the box. Oh, let's, see what, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. All right, all right. What do we got? I've been oh, the smallest forever. for them. Small. Okay. Small. That's, that what is, that what is this? No size. There's no size oh, for this. Oh, it's a, it's a shift boot. Oh, what? Are you serious right now? Dude, yeah, really? now you know why I was so excited <laughs> about it. Oh my God. We gotta edit the, the, the bald eagle coming out of there. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's that's not, not bald eagle, man. That's not what a bald eagle is. Like, hey, get rid of that. Chicken hawk. Ah. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at it. Oh, good for you. It comes in peanut size. How's oh. it fit? It smells good, dude. Man, that thing is sweet. <laughs> this thing is sweet. Y'all jealous or what? Look at that. Okay, we got some gloves. Yeah. Shoes. Oh, yeah, black. Like Definitely again. my yeah, favorite. Christmas. Ooh, what do the shoes look like? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Ooh. Let's check out the suits. They're the big boxes. They're the big boxes down here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, whoa. Baby. Yo, open this up, Alex. Look at that. Let's check that out. This is medium. This is yeah, mine. This is mine. Nice. Don't touch it. This is mine. Oh, yeah, this is nice. This is a nice upgrade. Oh, it's nice and thin. I love that. Yo, they make that for men? What does it feel like? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here, buddy. For men? Yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's actually, it's actually pretty thin. That feels pretty breathable, actually. Yeah. Oh, we got blue. You guys ordered the one with the tutus. Is that an option? Doobie, you gotta... What? Can we take you back to the store? What <laughs> 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 happened? <laughs> I was inspected by Inspector A. <laughs> you should fire that guy because this shit is defective. Alright, man. Alright. <laughs> Enough. Let's get back to work.
I need that wrap. So I got the Thermotech, the wrap. Let it soak in some water. That should be good. He forgot, he forgot to pull off the, uh, yeah. No. We gotta let John do his thing today. He's chilled way out. Yeah, he's chilled out today, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's time. Gotta open up our can and filter, put it on our sweet holly intake. Unlike a paper filter, you just throw those things away. This thing's lifetime. So you spray oil on it, and then it's gonna collect all the dirt and the grime and all that junk that you pick up at the track. They have a lot of different sizes, so you can just kind of really get the one you need. Tighten this bad boy on. Look at how cool that looks. You don't have to worry about a box or anything. It's just a filter, water intake. That's it. Nothing else is restricting it. If you're trying to fit a filter like in your uh, stock OEM airbox, they make applications for that as well, depending on your vehicle. Obviously, this can be used as, you know, like a universal filter. So anything with whatever diameter this is, that will fit on. Even including like this small little cannon filter right here that I'm actually going to use for our engine breather system over here on the valve cover. So we're going to stick this little guy right on there, going to tighten it up. And now we're going to get uh, good breathing air to our uh, valve covers. We're gonna start it to make sure we have no leaks. Yes, let me see. Do it. flaring tool from Eastwood. I've always used uh, this tool for brake lines, like doing like double flares and whatnot. But what I need to do is this line <clears throat> is the line for uh, our return on our power steering box. And then this will go to our cooler. And then from our cooler, we'll come back to our return on our tank. But I don't wanna just slip this over like a hose like that because it's not gonna be a tight fit. So what I wanna do is just add like a double flare, even though there's not gonna be a fitting on here. So this is the quarter inch die for a quarter inch tube. Put it in like so, put the top in, like here. Now what I'll always try and check too, when I'm doing uh, this kind of stuff, I wanna make sure that the tube is pretty flush with the end of the die, like about right there. We don't have to be super accurate with it. There's different types of dies here. Obviously there's uh, like this flat style, this style, this style, this style, but it's all labeled on top. So we're using quarter inch and we wanna use quarter inch up on here. All right, and then uh, use this little lever right here and it pulls the die into the tubing while this holds. We use this little one because we already added our single flare and now to add the double flare, go into this die right here. And voila, we have a double flare. So now that we have our line flared, I can go ahead and I can slip over, you know, a hose like this. And then after I do it that way, I can put a hose clamp over it so the hose won't want to slip off. That's the whole point of adding the flare to this. So we're probably gonna, we're gonna route our uh, power steering cooler you know, about like here onto this existing panel, but I can come down with a line to here 
and then take this side over to the return side of the actual power steering tank. And our power steering system will be good to go. Oh, I want you to look at that. Damn. <laughs> for the first time. We got some 235 4018s. It's good to keep the front uh, tires a little skinnier than the backs just because of clearance issues really. This is a Falcon, a Zenus. These are the same things you'll see on um, guys like JGP, OD, Matfield. Same thing they use in FD. So super grippy, super consistent, very very soft, perfect tire for something like your front tires on a drift car giving a super consistent, even grip. They have a tendency to wear very evenly. Probably gonna be running this at like, I'd say 18 or 16 PSI on the front. And then on the back, we're gonna play with it. These are really grippy tires. We don't wanna be breaking our drive shaft or our rear axle. So for the rear, we'll start. It's always good to start high and then drop it. We're gonna start these things at 60 in the back because these are really good tires. And we got 255s in the back. So like I said, we're gonna start it at 60 and now we're gonna drop it as we start driving the car. So I think in the end, we'll probably be running these at about 35 PSI. But I mean, guys in pro run these things at like 15. So, but when you got a lot of horsepower, you can run them pretty low. And the lower you go, the more grip you're gonna have. Like barely as Oh dude, it clears everything. Oh man, I don't have to do any more work. Well, I got a trim right here. Bloop. But just the tiniest bit. That is awesome, man. That is awesome. It's a good wheel bearing, too. All right, here's what we got so far the exhaust, the up pipes, or, or the up pipes, or and lack the dump. of, and the dump are done. The, we're doing the other side in the cooler pipe. No, it doesn't go like that. It goes, it goes, like, it goes like this. And our power steering line is cooler. Done through the headlight because you know it looks cool plus we weren't using the headlights we had a little incident with the high pressure line here this first half is from the Acura motor the Honda motor the K24 but the bottom half is from the 350Z I had to weld the two together it's weeping a little bit I'm gonna take that line back out and put two more passes of TIG welding on it hopefully that solves it it is a high pressure line so a tiny little pinhole will even make that thing leak. Alex has been getting uh, our front suspension all dialed and I'm really, really stoked with how these wheels are coming out. Like this is coming out super sick. So, especially with them Falcon tires on there, man. Yeah, Alex really killed it on this angle kit, dude. This is sick. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I've been doing kind of like the less fun stuff. I had to relocate our fuel pump from this direction to here because I didn't have enough fuel line and we're really, uh, you know, the bottom of the budget here. But I got our return all hooked up, some of our pre-wiring here. I also hooked up our power steering cooler. I had Alex weld up this return since we don't need it, since we only need one return. High pressure line is already hooked up. I know it looks a little kind of bit janky, but I'm just using a factory line. That's what I got to work with. So now we're just gonna have to make a mount for it. At the end of the day, we're gonna have fun with it. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there. That's my leak. All right, no worries. I'll fix it.
gotta make one of them third pedals. What's going on, Hoonigan viewers? Let me ask you this. Are you the type of person that winds up in a ditch sideways with a lot of people recording you on their phones? Do you perhaps own a C4 Corvette and drive it like it is an actual race car? So if you've got race car dreams, but more like a Mustang leaving a car show skill set, we've got the solution for you. Here at Hoonigan, we're offering you a chance you crows we're offering you a chance to win an all expense paid trip to skip barber racing school where you can learn how to not understeer or crash into things look tight as f where you can stop acting like you know how to drive and actually be able to drive here's how you enter go to dollarshaveclub.com slash hoonigan sign up for a new subscription to dollar shave club then go to hoonigan.com slash dsc follow the steps on that page after that you're done but hurry contest ends soon Day 12, we here, we back, we ready to work? Excluding today, we have three days left. Three days left. John was gonna finish up, what is it called, the angle kit? <laughs> yeah. I'm very technical, the, the it's called the angle. The tie rod extender kit. The tie rod extendo yeah. kiddo. Yeah, I we're don't gonna... think we need so much of an angle. Uh, for grid, right? For grid, to so, on a grid. Check out the kick on this. Like, what? Don't worry, the upper bowl joint is loose. Look, look, how, look how much angle we got now. Right off eBay. We ordered right off eBay. So okay. in any case, John was going to finish that this morning. I'm not going to be outside at all today. It is time to put back the roll cage. You guys saw me build this thing like the first week. That's the goal. Finish off the cage. John was going to finish that. And hopefully by the end of today, it's going to be down on the ground in the parking lot. I don't really know what day it is, to be honest. We're making a lot of progress on the car. I've just been informed this morning that right now we're $54 over budget. So we're at $10,000 and $54. That means that we can't buy no more crap. I still got the wiring harness, the ECU, and the manifold that I could still uh, sell to basically put us back under budget. But I've already put this stuff on offer up and literally got one bite. The guy flaked, he wanted the manifold is what it is. Alex has been doing some awesome work. He got our wheels all on and the car looks freaking sick. Alex gonna hate me saying this, but at this angle, it looks like an S13 coupe. So Alex doesn't like S chassis. He's an S chassis hater. Hater for days. <laughs> Plan of attack for today. Alex is going to work on the pedals. He already got, uh, which one, which pedal is this, Alex? Is this the clutch pedal? This is a brake pedal that came out of the car. This is gonna be the clutch pedal. Okay. So we'll retain the factory brake pedal. Okay. Because it's all done, and then I have to make a mount for our new clutch pedal. For our new clutch. Yeah, okay. Just like that. All right. Just get that car started, Josh. Yeah. We, I wanna see if I can get this thing started today. We'll get off cam and get to work. It really is a gas tank underneath here. If this is the last video you take of me, tell my wife. No, don't tell her nothing. Yo, Alex, you hiring? Uh, yeah. Are you fired? 
Because you should fire somebody. Oh, what? Damn. <laughs> he don't even know what to say to that. Damn. Why is he so savage? Savage? Damn. You haven't seen me savage yet. Oh my lord. <laughs> he's like, he's like, like a, a little old man. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. I can't lord. You. Okay. You're like, you're like, oh, golly. If my mom were to say something <laughs> like that, she would. She'd say something back to you. <laughs> Just be mean, Alex. Just you, do it. Do it. You can do it. Do it. Throw the meatloaf. Ma! Nope. Ah, I want meatloaf. Ma! Nope. Ah! Damn, it's called peer pressure. Ma! Meatloaf. Do it. Do it. Ah! We got guests. Meatloaf. Well, we're running the, the Falcon tires. 205, 40, 18. What that means is it's 245 millimeter. That's an aspect ratio, and that's the size of the rim, the 18. So with the grooves as a street tire, if there's like little rubber debris on the ground, it doesn't pick them up. It goes in grooves, kind of spits them out like it does with water. So the street tire, I think, is a, is a better advantage because you want to slide a little bit, and you want it sticky around the corners. Correct. Low tire pressure on the front. Tire pressure in front, yes. And you want as much as you can get in the back, probably about 50 psi. Might break the axles. I'm yeah. afraid of that. Yeah. Because when you put a big, perfect tire like this on, it's going to be putting a lot of twisting force, rotational mass. It's going to twist our axles in half. That's what we're really worried about. You got to warm up your tires before you do any serious driving because they handle completely differently. And also, your tire pressures change based on how warm the tire is. So for instance, if you got a tire that's at 35 PSI, you could see a big a jump up to 47 or 50. First thing we'll play with is definitely what Alex said is uh, high uh, tire pressure. Because the lower we go, it's just gonna be harder on the axles and the rear end. We're gonna start tire pressure. I think tire pressure is gonna be the most important thing because we're running the same compound, so there's no, there's no changing compound. So tire pressure is what we're gonna play with. All right, ready to go? Yeah, you have a way to like just kill it? Yeah, I'll kill it from the ECU, from that plug. You got it like right away. Yeah. All right, ready? There's no compression. There's no uh, oil in the lift. In the lift here. Hey Alex, see if you can give it a little bit of air at the throttle body, because yeah. it's fully closed. I haven't adjusted the screw. Hmm. I smell fuel. Yeah, it's getting fuel. They got all the engine, all the plugs, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yo, we need a fire extinguisher! Yeah, are you sure the coils aren't switched? Switch aren't switched. Well, so I need to double check. What do you think it is? What, what's wrong with it? Uh, I think they got the ignition timing wrong. It could be because they put the extended harnesses on their coils. It could be backwards. Having that ignite on that flame that we saw come out from one side, you know you got fuel and spark. So now you just gotta check the timing. Whether it's mechanical or ignition. It might be a timing. It doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like it's even wanting to fire. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna pull a spark plug out and see what it's doing. Oh yeah. There's a lot of fuel on them plugs. Okay, so we're getting spark to the plugs. What I'm doing right now, I'm taking off all the insulators off the spark plug wires because with the stock plugs, it's tough to really tell whether the plug is fully on the, the spark plug or not. So I'm gonna do it by hand and feel around and make sure it's 100% on there, just to rule it out. So it looks like it's something that I'm overlooking here. Huh? What did you just say? 
we gotta pull the motor to change the oil. Cause somebody decided to uh, notch the frame exactly where my oil drain is. <laughs> it's not funny, dude. That shit funny. It's a little funny. That shit's that, funny. That's not funny. That shit funny. Be smart. To change your oil, you would have to buy oil, right? And use the box from the oil package to make it drink. Let's see if it's gonna work. Pom, pom, pom. All right. You do a cardboard and you're good. That's pretty clever. So, check it out, y'all. We got our firewall plate right there. On the original third gen, everything was a through bolt. You gotta hold a nut and a bolt and you gotta hold wrenches on each side. Not a good system. So, well, this nice little plate, we got our holes for our master cylinders here. Just pop those bad boys in, bolt those right on up, and you're done. And uh, now I'm just gonna weld around here. Then I'll go on the other side, I'll bang out the original firewall there and I'll weld that to the back side of the plate and we'll have a really nice sturdy platform to have our master cylinders on. the valves to where they should be then we're pushing the valve open and the engine isn't making any compression what's the fix now um most likely it's gonna be shorter push rod length these are too long as alex explained it's hanging them up it's hanging it's leaving the valve open so the only solution is to literally swap it out which here's the push rod right here so it's a pretty simple fix i'm gonna have to measure these see where these are at and then uh, yeah, find some find some others. Usually you can tighten it, you can go about a quarter of a turn, it should be good, but this definitely went obvious. Now it's not making the motor run, so it's not right. What you got for me, Mitch? Special delivery. Special delivery. Freaking push rod time. this thing up. Yo, did you put water in the, in the uh... We put water in the intake. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Fire in the hole.
definitely feels a lot better because this engine's been fighting me since literally day one. Um, you know, obviously like with the cam bearing being spun and then getting the wrong cam bearings been <laughs> putting in, it's all, it, I like, I literally feel like I've been fighting it this entire time and finally I feel like we've got like a good, like, we took, you know, eight steps forward and stayed there, not taking eight steps forward and then 16 back. So it sounds good. Um, you know, I, I can hear a little bit of the rocker click, like a little bit. I think I went a little bit too short on the push rods, but uh, you know, I'm just glad to hear it fire up. Hell yeah. you put on an angle kit today yes, let's see only, that uh, and it only took me 40 minutes well let's see the angle man well the, the alignment will show us the angle yeah sounds like a lot of excuses no excuses you want to check it out i want to see it yeah let's see this angle yeah we are not uh we are not we are not all right uh, what drifting drifting are you what am i looking at that's here that's it that's good my man that's good that's perfect. That's how we want it. That, that almost looks like less than stock. I did it lesser than stock. You heard it here first, yes. folks. You want yes. less than stock less than angle stock for what we're doing. For what we're doing, for less what than stock doing. angle. This is for fantastic. What we're doing. You definitely want five degrees, five degrees of steering angle. Yes. to have exactly 27 more hours of work left on this. It's been a lot of work to get this whole car modern. I've been prioritizing go fast and not safety. <laughs> fast first, safety last. The twins today, the twins. Look at the hair, look at the hair. It's, it's the battle of the hair today. Oh, battle of the gel today, look at this. Team hair. You guys don't even want me to let my hair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> battle of the hair. Oh, look at this, look at this. Damn. These guys, these guys have it, these guys have it. You guys should go work on the Camaro. Right <laughs>